may be. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I wanted to mention, uh, talk about uh, just a few minutes on the horn of salvation. <laughs> the horn of salvation. I'm, I'm going to go to Psalm uh, 105. I know it's in the Old Testament. And I know a lot of people get worked out about it. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know it all passed away, but I dug your mind back up and dusted it off. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Psalm 105. Yeah, I went out and, and spoke life back into mine and got it back. Went ahead and put it right next to the New Testament. And, and he breathed life back into it and it came back alive. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In Psalm 105, we're going to talk about the horn of salvation. The yes. Bible talks a lot about horns. Yeah. You know, it talks about... There's actually, some, I think, what, Michelangelo or somebody that talks about... Um, uh, uh, I believe it's Moses, it, the horns, uh, there's a reference something about horns, and I believe it's Michelangelo, or one of them, the sculptors made a uh, sculptor of, of Moses with horns coming out of his head. <laughs> yeah, okay, I think I'm right on that, yeah. And uh, so, uh, but this is the horn of salvation. Now, hopefully we get through this, it's going to shed a little light on it. But in Psalm 105, starting in verse 5, uh, Hey, have you, have you read Psalm 105 lately? I mean, you, go, you actually need to get back over about Psalm 104. Yeah. And then you can't find the brake pedal to get over about Psalm 111 or 712 yeah. somewhere in there. But uh, this is good stuff. It really is. It's the Word of God. But uh, I wish I had time to just do it all. But, but anyway, in Psalm 105, starting in verse 5, it tells us to do something. It says, Remember His marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Kind of goes along with what we've been saying here tonight, you see. Out of your mouth, you see, uh, that's things that are in your heart that come out your mouth, you see. And uh, when you speak faith-filled words coming out of your heart, they're going to come out your mouth. When you speak fear, it says that the, the power of death and life is in the, the power of the tongue. And I know a lot of people have abused that take it too far. Okay, there's a difference in in my words and God's words. Yes. That's the difference. Yes. Okay, yes. it's all right to speak His words. You can speak His words all day long, Amen. But when you try to substitute your words for His words, I'm sorry, you can't override the, His words, Amen. That's right. And that's where they get it. The charismatical movement gets in trouble. That uh, do we need to bring this down just a little more? Yeah. It's still echoing. Anyway, uh, 105 uh, five says, "Remember His." I know there's many instances in the Bible where it says forgetting those things in the past, but there, when God tells you to remember, yes. you need to remember. Remember His marvelous works. See, it doesn't just say remember His works. It says remember His marvelous works that He hath done, His wonders and His judgments of His mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, His servant, ye children of Jacob, His chosen. He is the Lord our God. Amen. His judgments are... In, in all the earth. He hath remembered. See, he tells us to remember and he says he hath remembered. What's he remembered? He remembered his covenant. How long? Forever. Amen. The word which he commanded to how many generations? Thousands. thousand generations. Well, how would we know it's been commanded a thousand generations if we if the Old Testament's passed away? Right. And he passed away. Yeah. Listen. The Word of God, this says all Scripture is given. Well, all Scripture doesn't start in Matthew. It starts in Genesis. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I'm sorry. I mean, you know, um, I can't help what people say. I'm not trying to be politically correct. I'm trying to be scripturally correct. Amen. Best I can. Amen? Amen. Amen. It says, commanded to a thousand generations. We ain't had a thousand generations yet. How long is a generation, according to the Bible? You got it. A lot of people, they tell you 40 years and all that kind of stuff. But it says that in Genesis, it says uh, that the children of Israel were going to go down into Egypt and they were going to be down there for 400 years. And it says until the fourth generation. So if, if a, a generation, they're going to be down there four generations and they're going to be down there 400 years, <laughs> that's 100 years is a generation, okay? Uh, most people don't know that, but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, we haven't had a thousand, hundred, hundred thousand 
uh, years from the time this was written yet, okay? A lot of people say, listen, a lot of people say, well, you know, that when it says uh, in day one these things happened and that day was a thousand years or a million years or whatever. No, 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 no. That was a 24-hour day. The evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. If you believe in any other thing about creation than a literal 24-hour day, you believe in evolution. You believe in evolution. If you believe it took more than six days for God to create the heaven and earth, Amen. literal days, then you believe in evolution. Because evolution takes thousands and millions of years to evolve. But in creation... Amen. See, I believe that because I believe that's the I believe that's the right way to believe. I didn't believe it took thousands and millions of years for these things uh, to to take place. There was a time I, I would bald you, Major. There was a time that I taught science, and and I I, I, I would come to the place that I believe that we did actually come out of the sea. That we have crawled up on the bank, and and uh, we we come from a one cell organism and all that, you know, and. and uh, I know we'll forget one time we had this, uh, substituting uh, one of the one of the biology teachers had to leave and she said well can you watch my six period class I said sure and we were in there and they were they were uh, talking something about um, evolution uh, before I got walked in there well I'm walking in there cold you know first time I've ever been in her classroom and it's this one kid stands up and he says uh, this teacher's trying to tell us that we came from monkeys or something or blah 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 I said well the truth is we really came from uh, the uh, uh, a lot lower than that, you know, a <laughs> one cell, and the kid gets up and he storms out of the classroom and he says, "I'm not listening to this stuff. I was just trying to make a kind of a joke, you know." But I didn't realize that the stage had already been set, you know. And so, uh, but the Bible says that God actually didn't create us out of the sea, out of the creek, out of the river. It says He took some dust and He formed us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So thank you, Jesus. We're not one cell uh, organism that we're, we're, we're a speck of dust. Not ashes. Not ashes. Not ashes. There's no place in the Bible that, that you were made out of ashes. That you can't make anything alive out of ashes. If you take in anything and you burn it that's alive, you're going to have what? You're going to have ashes. But if you take dirt and burn it, and when you get through, you still got burnt dirt. <laughs> <laughs> It's this dust. Amen. And this thought came to me. I'm not preaching this as such, but this thought came to me one time. You know, it talks about uh, uh, that we'll be in Christ. That, you know, He made us out of the dust of the earth. And how many particles of dust does it take to make a man? And I wonder, when God gets the last piece of dust... <laughs> <laughs> and puts it in the completion of man, I wonder if that's when the end of time will be. Food for thought. Just, I'm reaching out there. That will be the body of Christ when the last piece of dust is put in its proper place. If you got it, give it. For all things were made before all things were made. And yet there's a time that remains that all things will that are made will be yet made. And newness. For nothing is new in me, but yet all things are new because each day is new unto you. But the day that you find yourself in, the hour that you find yourself in, the moment that you find yourself in, the place that you find yourself in, is not old in me, but it is in newness for this moment that I have placed you in. For I created this hour and this moment for you. And all the things that will have ever been or ever will be, that they are new each morning in 
that that I have created you in and for, for that time and for that hour that you find yourself in. And then when you pass from this life into the eternal life, that you will find that there is a newness that is in me that you've never known. A newness in a relationship, a newness in creation, a newness in revelation, a newness in understanding, a newness that you cannot yet know. That's when all things will be new and never grow old. For they are created in me and by me and for me and unto me in newness which never, never will ever grow old. Amen. That's kind of deep right there. Amen. Amen. That's kind of deep. That's deep. Amen. That takes a little chewing right there. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Get a new name. Get a new body. Get eternal. No sickness, no disease, no infirmity, no death, no tears, no party. Can't wrap my mind around all that yet. I'm sorry. Just have to accept it. But that will be such a newness that our mind and our, our spirit can't really get there yet. Amen. But you see, in God, uh, that everything that that uh, has ever been or ever will be, He already knows about it or He wouldn't be God. <laughs> right. Amen. Hallelujah. See, He doesn't say He's going to make all new things. That's right. He says He's going to make all things new. Amen. Vast right. difference. Amen. Yes. Vast difference. Yep. All right. Praise the Lord. So we're well, on where I got to. But anyway, uh, in 8, He hath remembered His covenant forever, His word, which... Uh, he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. How long is everlasting? Everlasting forever. It don't have no end. Everlasting doesn't have an end. Listen, remember this. If you you see these all these prophetic these people. Preachers or teachers that's going to teach you on uh, 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 prophecy, yep. and they say I'm a pro I'm a prophecy teacher or preacher, and they start and they get on that blackboard or they get a piece of paper right there and they draw you a straight line. That's about the time to leave right there. Yep. <laughs> that's right. God, they say, God out of His left eye He looks back in, in eternity beginning, and then out the right side eye He looks in eternity everlasting. We don't. God don't work in a line. God works in a circle. He sets up on the circle of the earth. Amen. He's sickly. He's round. Everything has no end and has no beginning. Praise God. In God, He's always been and He always will be. He didn't start here and end here. Life didn't start here and end here. Jesus didn't start here and end here. The Word didn't start here and end here. It started before man could ever understand it and it lasts for an everlasting. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If God gets up and says, we're going to talk about prophecy. I've never seen one do this. He said, we're going to talk about prophecy. I'm, I'm going to teach prophecy. He gets up and draws a circle. I say, this guy may have a handle on things. I'll be able to sit here and listen to him. Amen. <laughs> that, sounds, see, that sounds funny to us, right? Because we think in a line. God thinks in a circle. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, he said it's for everlasting. His word is everlasting. No beginning. No end. Amen. See, that's why I like in the wedding we talk about the ring. This ring is a symbol of everlasting love. <laughs> it's a circle. <laughs> you know. Well, where do we get crazy stuff like that we talk about? Well, you know, I just fell out of love with them, you know. They just killed my love. You can't kill love. Are you kidding me? How do you fall out of love? You can't fall out of love. Show me scripturally where you fall out of love. It says love never fails. Amen. Right. If you didn't have any to start with, then you, you might be a gem in the point there. You know? Or you might be an alcoholic and fall off the wagon. <laughs> but you're not going to fall out of love. We just, probably, we just fell out of love. No, you didn't. That's an earthly mindset of stuff. Amen? Right. And, and so, uh, where am I going down there? I don't know. But anyway, Luke. We're going to Luke. It's, listen. The reason we went to Psalm is now he you're going to see this set up in Luke. I, I hope I can give you about 20% of what he was showing me 
out of the book of Luke, which actually started in, in Psalm 105, the verses 5 through 10, which I just read. Go with me to Luke chapter 1. Watch this. This is good, saints. This is you you you'll get this. This is good. It really is. I never saw, I could have never correlated all this. But actually, Psalm 105, 5 through 10 sets up Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 67. This is, this is when uh, uh, Zechariah was in there doing his uh, yearly uh, priestly thing. And uh, the angel came and said, you're going to have a son. Your prayers have heard and you're going to have a son. And, and so uh, he began to be in doubt and unbelief and God said, well, you, you just, I'm going to just shut your mouth for you. Right. See, he, he said, I can, I can close a gate. <laughs> mouth is a gate. Yeah. And so God closed his gate, closed the doorway uh, to his mouth so he wouldn't be speaking a bunch of junk. And so he, was, he, he couldn't talk uh, for those nine months or how many months it was. You know, I, we just say, well, maybe he left there and went home and, and, uh, and, and Elizabeth got pregnant. I don't know if it was that or it was two months later or six months. I don't know. Right. The scripture don't say, but the, the reality is that for however long it was, he couldn't talk. Right. Okay? Right. Now, John is, he's a little Jewish baby boy, so he's going to be circumcised uh, on the eighth day. So they're going to take this little boy down here. And they're going to have the priest, and he's going to take his very sharp knife, and he's going to cut off the foreskin of this little boy. And, and he's going to circumcise him. And, and see, a, a Jewish baby boy, okay, when did Jesus become Jesus? On the eighth day. Um, for the first seven days, he's just a baby boy. This is the son of Mary and Joseph. He didn't have a name. His name shall be called, but not until the eighth day. On the eighth day, what shall this child's name be called? His name is called Yeshua. It's Jesus. What's this child's name going to be called? Well, Daddy can't say a word, so Elizabeth, she's going to have to speak. And she says, his name, the angel said his name is to be called John. Oh, wait a minute now, Elizabeth. You, you're having postpartum and all this stuff. You're talking <laughs> out of your head. There ain't nobody in your family ever been named John. What's wrong with you, woman? You can't believe a woman no way. Get over here. John, so John gets over there and Yokanah says, uh, "Give me a tablet. What's this child's name called? His name shall be called John." Right. The people are astounded. They don't understand this. And so, when this happens, let's we'll pick up in in verse sixty-seven. And the father and his father, John's father, and his father Zacharias. Was filled with what? No, no, don't say that. Please don't say that. He wasn't filled with that. He was filled with who? He was filled with who was he filled? The Holy Ghost. Wait a minute. We got a problem here. We're not in the book of Acts. <laughs> King Green said, if I had her, I'd scratch it. Always <laughs> <laughs> yeah. been. Watch it. You see that right there, what it says? Yeah. yeah. Wait a minute. We ain't, we ain't had the broom experience yet. That's right. Huh? What well, kind of a deal is it? Is this a misprint? Nope. No. Nope. Not a misprint. My Bible says that Zacharias, before the book of Acts and the book of Luke, before Jesus was even born, that Zacharias was filled. It says he was filled. That's. Did your Bible say they feel? Yeah, yeah. Did your Bible say feel? Yeah. It was what? Well, it didn't say that this, the Spirit was upon him, does it? Yeah. It said the prophets, oh, the Spirit was upon them, right? The Spirit came upon them. But now, it says that Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh! That's awesome. Is that awesome? Amen. And because he was filled with the Holy Ghost, now he can do spiritual things. Oh, somebody might get this tonight. Somebody might get this. All he's been doing up to this point, all his life is talking. <laughs> he's just been talking. He's a priest. 
And he all he's ever been doing is talking and praying. That's all he's ever done. But now he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, something new, just like this tongue, his interpretation just had, something new that he's never done before, never had before, now is getting ready to manifest in his life. He's fixing to be changed from now unto eternity. Amen? Amen. What's going to change? It says that now that he's filled with the Holy Ghost, he prophesied. He never, they know where else the scripture said he ever prophesied. He couldn't prophesy because he wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. All he could ever do is talk and pray and serve. Talk, pray, serve. Talk, pray, serve. Talk, pray, serve. That's all he could do. But now he's going to prophesy because he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Now, what's what he says? And he said, Blessed be. What? Barukata <laughs> Adonai. He's a Jew now. He's going to start talking like a Jew. Every Hebraic prayer begins with "Blessed be the Lord." <laughs> Woo. Oh, but I, you know what's that stuff got to do? We're in the New Testament. Get out of here, man! You can't be talking like that. That's Old Testament stuff. That's that's Jewish stuff. You can't be talking like that. We're Gentiles. We're New Testament, man. See, most people read that now and have no idea what they're even saying. They don't know. Hey, they've been robbed. You know, I'd rather a man take a gun and rob me of what little bit of money I'd have than to let denomination and this thing called church rob me of my Jewish root. Amen? Right. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If you cut that Jewish root, you ain't going to have no understanding of spiritual things. You're going to have an idea, but you're not going to have an understanding. You're not going to have a knowledge of, of, of all the spiritual applications that apply the root. I never said that before, but I said it tonight. Amen. May I say something? Yes, sir. When the Gentiles were grafted in, yes, sir. It was from a wild olive tree. Yes, yes sir. And when they would be grafted in, when the Jews be grafted in back into the real olive tree, yes. the root, same root. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but but the the vine. You cannot kill. I don't know if you know this. You've worked in trees all your life. But you cannot kill an olive tree. You can never kill an olive tree. You can burn it. You can chop it down. You can whatever you can do. You, you take a bomb, blow it up. But you can't kill an olive tree. It will always produce a netzar. What's a netzar? It's a root. A netzar. An olive tree will always produce a netzar. You can't destroy it. You cannot destroy it. Totally, completely destroy an olive tree. They will always produce a netzar or a root. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, and it says in that that, that they were broken off. This, this breaks your heart when you, when you really see this. It says that they were broken off. You know, you didn't say that, you know, he's, he's worked in trees all his life. He would never think of going out in somebody's beautiful tree and just walking up there and grabbing hold of it and start breaking limbs off. Guys, put, throw the chainsaws away. Throw the pruners away. Let's just go over there and if that limb's too big for you, we'll just all team up on it and we'll break it off of there. He'd never think about doing that. In fact, they'd never hire him to come back. Why? Because it's going to be a terrible tearing. It's going to tear into, into the main part, into the body of that tree. It's going to be ragged. It's going to be all those things. You see, he's going to go and he's going to pay men to cut, not tear. They were broken out. They were torn from. You, you understand? Can you understand a little bit? You know, it'd be one thing if you if you cut your arm off. It'd be a terrible other thing to have it torn from off of your body. You understand right. what I'm saying? Yeah. That they were told, they were they were broken off of that tree, that that, that main tree, to make room for who? For us, the Gentiles, that we could be grafted where? In with them and among them. It's, it's, you know, the humane thing would have been, it didn't say cut, it says they were torn. You know? They were broken from off from the main part of the, of the, of the life-giving part of that tree. Amen? That, that's sad. Uh, you know, it says he, he was broken. Can you can begin to understand a little bit about what was going on there? It's more than just words and pictures. 
it is spiritual application of what it took to get us in. I don't know if we can really appreciate it. Because you know why? We have a haughty attitude. We have a haughty spirit. Amen. We think, bless God, we're Gentiles. Bless God when that sound trump with that trump comes and shout it. Bless God, we're the Gentile church. Bless God, we're getting out of here. Woo! First load. Them poor devil Jews, they're going to get what's coming to them. I'm Christ killers. They're going to finally get it. The Hitler couldn't do it and all that, but bless God, that's going to get them. They're going to finally get what they deserve. That's the heartbeat of Gentile thinking. Uh, uh, we, don't, we don't really go that uh, in, in, in words lots of times, but, but that's where we skirt around it. We skirt around it. You know, let's say Martin Luther, you know, well, you know, he, he nailed his thesis to the door of the Catholic Church and everything, you know. Did you know he's one of the biggest... Hitler took his, uh, 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 his, his destruction, his Holocaust ideals from Martin Luther. Right. Martin Luther said, bless God, the Jews are going to come in and accept Christ. And when they didn't, he turned against them. He said, anybody kills the Jews doing God a favor. Amen? Yeah. And Hitler, boy, he grabbed them to all that. And... And he, he ate it up hook, line, and sinker. I don't know how I got there, but anyway. <laughs> but listen, watch this, saints. This is good. In verse uh, uh, 69, it says, let me go back to 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for He hath visited and redeemed who? 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 Who's His people? Oh, well, no. You ought to be smacked right in the mouth saying stuff like that. How can you say that? You Gentile. You ought to be lifting yourself up as a Gentile above them Jews. You mean, you mean, you know, Jesus was a, he was a Christian. He was a Gentile. He was an Anglo-Saxon, right? That's the mindset that the world has. It's prevalent today as much as it was then the, this, when this was written. Do you know that? Right. It's just prevalent today. These things that I'm saying, I'm not trying to be funny about them. I'm telling you, this is real stuff. It's today. It's in, it's in churches all over the world. Amen. Today, right now. And, and, and listen to what he said. This, this man, he's the father of, of John, who is the predecessor of Jesus. And, and he was set up. All this was set up as in Psalm 105. And now we're coming down here and this man now is saying, in, in, in 69, he's saying, oh, um, um, and hath raised up a what? A horn. A who? A horn. a horn of salvation. That's where this title, this message has come from. He and hath raised up, up and horn of salvation for who? Us. Us, Us who? Us who? You answer it. Don't be afraid to say it. Right. These weren't Gentiles. He was not a Gentile. He wasn't talking to Gentiles. He wasn't talking about Gentiles. He says, us. He's a priest. He's a Jewish priest. He's speaking to a Jewish audience at a, a, a circumcision for uh, his son. He says, he's raised up. He's raised up a horn of salvation for us. Who? In the house of his servant David. Amen. Amen? Yeah, right. What's David got to do with it? We're talking, we got to talk about Jesus. We can't talk about David. Don't tell blind Bartimaeus that, okay? <laughs> he got blind Bartimaeus' sight. He didn't say Jesus, did he? No. Who do you say? Son of David! Son of David! Son of David! Have mercy on me. I'm blind, I can't see. You know what? <laughs> we need to cry today. Son of David, have mercy on us because we can't Amen. see. Amen. You know, we've been blinded by theology. Yes. We've been blinded by what the churches have told us, yep. theologians have told us, and a lot of preachers have told us, and teachers have told us. And, and we're blinded what the Word of God's told us. Amen? All right. Now I'm going to stop right there and then I'm going to come back. Keep your place right there. We're going to go to Psalm 132, 17. Save your place right there in Luke 2. And go back to Psalm 132. Okay? 
Psalm 132. In Psalm 132, verse only one verse, verse 17. 132, verse 17. Look what it says. Are you there? Yes. There will I make the horn of David to bud. <laughs> Ooh. The horn of David to bud. I have ordained a lamp for mine anointing. Who is Jesus, Yeshua? What's His title? The Anointed One. The Anointed One. Amen. When, 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 now listen. What, when Samuel came to Jesse, he said, you got any boys? He said, oh man, he said, boys, I, I got all kinds of boys. <laughs> Don't give me no girls, give me boys. Well, where are them boys? Oh, he said, they're right around here. He said, get them boys in here. Oh, he said, look at this one. Oh, he's tall. He's handsome. Woo. Oh, man. Surely that's one God wants me to, to anoint. I said, nah. Next one, he said, that nurse kind of, he's a little bit smaller, but, you know, he's pretty stout. And he's, yeah, surely God could use him. God says, no. Next one, and next one, and next one. Jesse says, I mean, Samuel says, hey, uh, Jesse, you got any more boys? He said, oh, I got one little ruddy-faced boy out there in the field. He said, said, all about all he can do is take care of sheep. He said, uh, how about going to get, he said, right. how about a couple of you guys, go, boys, go out there and get your brother and bring him in here. Y'all watch your sheep and send him in here. Samuel wants to see him. Look him over. So they go out and here comes this little ruddy kid in there and God says that's the one and it says that Samuel took something and did something with it what did he do tell me yeah, horn, with, horn, of horn, oil horn, he took a horn of horn. oil and he anointed David are you getting this yeah. Psalm 105 now Psalm 132 yeah. and now we're back in Luke now, what's getting ready to happen is uh, a, God has raised up a horn of salvation. Amen. That now is being prophesied that has already been spoken of in, in uh, uh, Psalm 105, in Psalm 132. And now we get over to Luke chapter 1. We got John, who's a predecessor of Jesus. Six months later, Jesus is getting ready to be born. And the horn is ready. Amen. To be poured out. It's ready to bud. Amen. Woo-hoo. Hallelujah. Y'all getting there. Okay. Hallelujah. We could get excited here in a little while. Amen. Now, let's go back to Luke. Luke, let's go back to Luke. Just a minute. Now, we're in... Uh, it's about to get good here. And, and we're, we're at 69. You want to read that again? And he hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets... See, he as he has spoke by the mouth. That was that was David. That was back in Psalm. Okay, that was in the writers, the prophetic voice that was spoken back in Psalm. Is now he's reminding the people as he spake. Who spake? As he spake. Who? God spake. As he spake. God spake by the mouth. Let's see it. As he being God, it doesn't say that, but you you have to read. That's the way it's it as. As he, God, spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets. See, that's a difference. But you got people running around today saying, We're come to our service tonight. We're gonna to have prophet so and so there. There's a lot of people running around with prophets. They call themselves prophets. Let me tell you the difference between prophets and prophets. There are prophets and there's holy prophets. Amen. The holy prophets, I'll go, I'd go and listen to a holy prophet. Them other prophets, most of them I may give you 15 cents for. Amen. And most of them can't live up to their billing. In fact, one of these days I'm going to show you, teach you on, on uh, uh, God's qualifications for a man to be called a prophet. And see how many people stand in line. I guarantee you, put a line of 100 out there and call himself a prophet. And when you get through, I don't know if you can find one that wouldn't be a prophet when he got through uh, trying to meet the qualifications of being a prophet. Amen. I got so turned off a few years ago. Every time you turn around, 
Every, just about every woman in, in Pentecostal church was prophetess. Prophetess so-and-so, prophetess so-and-so. Yeah. Prophet. We had more prophetesses than we did prophets. And they were multiplying faster than the prophets were. And, I, you know, it's really not funny. It's kind of sad. It's dangerous. Did we self-proclaim to be anything? Mm. And he says, spoke by the mouth of, holy, of, of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Which have been since the world began. He, there have been holy prophets since the world have been. That we should be what? Saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Who hates you? Your enemy. Who's your enemy? Ha Satan. The devil hates you. He hates your children. He hates your wife. He hates your husband. He hates your grandkids. He hates your dog. He hates your house. He hates your bank account. He hates your health. He hates uh, uh, your joy. He hates your peace. He hates everything. That represents your your Creator, God. Amen. It says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Woo! Hallelujah! And did anybody hear blind Bartimaeus right there? Did anybody hear blind Bartimaeus using <clears throat> seventy-two to perform the what? To perform what? Mercy, mercy promised to our fathers. Son of David, how of what? Mercy. 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 He's calling on verse 72. He's calling on the promises of God that says that these sure mercies of David are going to stand, praise God. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. They're still in effect. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Mom. Amen. Yes. Why? Why? To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember His holy covenant. What did Psalm 105 say? He remembered it. For everlasting to a thousand generations. Yes. You see how this is tying together? I didn't just throw these things together. The Holy Spirit, saints, I could never have tied this together with this, with Psalm and this. Listen, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without what? Fear. Without what? Fear. Without what? Fear. He delivered us out of the hand of our enemy. The enemy of sickness and disease and poverty and heartache and trial. He delivered us out of the hand of our enemies. That we might serve God without fear. How? In holiness and while righteousness before Him all the days of our life. Amen. Conditional. This is the fullness of it. There will always be holiness people. Always. There will always be holiness people. Holiness has not passed away. Has not died out. You don't hear much talk about it. You know why? They try to do it on externals. Right. See, you, there's not a lady in here that would pass the hair test. You bunch of bobbed up women. Some of y'all got your arms showing. I mean, you ain't got three quarters. You ain't got three. You got preachers on you know you're going to hell. Some of y'all got on jewelry and lipstick and makeup. You know you're going to hell. Why? Because Pentecost has told you to be, if you're going to be holy, holiness women, you got to look like a hole. I reckon. <laughs> you ever seen a pretty hole in the ground? <laughs> no. Well, right. Am I? You've been in all your life. Yeah. Am I close? I mean, I might be. Jewelry. Yeah, y'all yeah, got rings on. No, no. Oh my goodness. Watches and earrings, earrings lipstick, and cut hair. Y'all ain't got a chance. Whoo! Y'all need to get up here and I don't know what we're gonna do. You ain't even got dresses on. I don't know what we're gonna do. Oh my goodness. It's terrible. Dress this man. Got on men's clothing. Oh Lord Jesus, what are we gonna do? You see? Well, well, I'm glad we've been liberated. I thought it was under grace. Well, no, we didn't law. I mean, you know. Under law. You know, law says put them britches away, women, and get you a long dress on. Down that ankle length at that. You hear me now? And you women quit prophesying without your head covered now. No open toed shoes. No open toed shoes. That's right. Amen. 
You know what? I don't believe there'll be there'll be a woman in hell just because she cut her hair. I don't believe there'll be a woman in hell just because she wore makeup. I don't believe there'll be a woman in hell just because she uh, 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 wore some jewelry. I don't believe there'll be, be, be a woman there because she didn't wear a dress every day of her life. I believe the only thing that you send a person to hell is not, if you're not born again through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen? It says blasphemy in the Holy Ghost is the only thing you can't be forgiven of. And we talk, we, we picked on our women. Boy, we like to pick on women. You know what? Beat them up good. 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 I'm talking about hadn't the church has done that long enough though? Hadn't the church has done that long enough? We spent more time on all that stuff and worrying about their soul. Amen. We're more concerned with what they look like Amen. on the outside and we were what they were on the inside. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Truth. That is the truth. You think Mary ever tried to talk to Jesus about spiritual things? I believe she did. Why? Because she's a mom. She loved the Lord. She knew. She she knew the. She knew the Torah. Guaranteed, she knew the Torah. She may have had to sit on one side, and Joseph, when they got married, sat on the other side of the church. And besides that, uh, I can't help y'all married. You need to be sitting on one side and him on the other. <laughs> did they ever do that at Pentecost? Did they just make the men sit on one side and the women, or did they always let men and women sit together? It's always, in time, it is. Okay. But even in Judaism today, you can't. Women sit on one side and men sit on the other. I think in the Mennonite church, the same way. Women sit on one side. Yeah. Quakers. Yeah. Quakers. Women are nothing more than dirt and in like the Mennonite religion. The Quakers. I mean, women ain't nothing. I mean, you know. Islam, women ain't nothing. You know. You tell a woman three times, you divorce her, and that's it. You're out of there, Jack. Get you another one. Or two or three more to go with her. Whatever it takes. And so, oh, how, where are we going, though? I don't know. You're doing all I know. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you, you know, you look, you look at where we are. You look at where, where in this thing, and, and you, you got to wonder what's it all about. Is it, is it more on externals or is it more internal? You, see? you know, you can have the best looking car in town, but the motor transmission be shot. You ain't going nowhere. I mean, you know. That's right. That's what did Jesus say about it? He said, what comes out of the man. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I think, you know, there's a lot of things that are more important than a lot of things that ain't important. I believe the soul is more important than the dress or the hair Amen. or the jewelry or the makeup. Amen. That's what I believe. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's like uh, Brother Will and I were talking about women preachers while ago. And I told him this. I said, uh, I put Sister Bianca's sermon Sunday up against any any man's sermon that's ever been preached on on the family that she preached Sunday. I put it up against any of them. I put it up against any of them. It was true. Powerful. It's true. Yes. I know Paul had some things to say about it. Sister Judy, she taught one Wednesday night. Remember that we had that lady and that, and, and that boy that yeah. they were the first time ever here. They, Sister Judy got up to teach that night. And they walked out and said, I'm not sitting in there listening to no woman teach. Yeah. You know? Uh, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all days of our life. Now he's going, and this, this thing's going to change right here. 76 and 77, there's a change. I hope somebody gets this right here. I hope I get this right here. I need to go to 76 and 77 in my own children's life. I've spoken things, but, but, Daddy Zacharias 
the father of John changed gears in 76 and 77. Amen. Yes, Watch amen. what happens. Listen to this. He's fixing now. He's, he's been talking about the nation and the people and the general. Now he's keying this into his son. Watch what he says. And thou child, who's the child? John. John. The one that's just now being circumcised. The one that's just now being named. And thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest. What an awesome thing for a dad to say over Amen. Yes. the Amen. He's going to be the prophet of the highest. Mm -hmm. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare His ways. Mm -hmm. To give knowledge of salvation unto His people by the remission of their sins. Mm -hmm. Wow. How would you like to have something come out of your mouth like that of one of your children? I mean, you know, I, I stand here tonight and, and I say, okay, I've, I've encouraged, I've spoken, I've prayed over my children. But you know, I've never prophesied that I know of really. I've never prophesied over them. I've told them some things, but as far as prophesying over them, I don't know. I've got to search my mind and, and, and I think I come up short. I don't believe I've prophesied over my children that I know of. Have you prophesied over your children? Maybe you've prayed over them, you've spoken over them, you've told them things, you've witnessed to them, you've done these things. But have you ever prophesied over your children? Well, see, God's not a respecter of persons, right? right? It might not be as prophetic as this, but yet it could still be prophecy. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Food for thought, saints. The, through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in what? Spirit. Spirit. And was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel. I got a, I got a question myself as I stand here and it, as, as I present this to you and say this. Why was this written this way? That this child grew strong in the spirit. Could it be that what his, his dad prophesied over him now is beginning to start growing in him not only bodily but spiritually? Maybe as we sit here as moms and dads maybe the reason there's some things that has not grown in our children's lives spiritually that he grew in the spirit. Maybe we, did, we haven't prophesied to plant that within them that it could grow. You, something that hasn't been planted can't grow, but it, right. think about that. Food for thought. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit. Yeah. And was in the. See, we've tried to do a lot of things to our children by prayer and by counsel and by telling and by encouraging and all those things. But have we, have we prophesied into their lives things that that their spirit could grow strong. The preaching, it doesn't say that hey, they took him to the synagogue and the preaching uh, caused him. But I believe it was what the father prophesied over his son that began to grow strong in the spirit. Think about that. Just do whatever. Go with me. We're going to go one more place. Go with me to uh, Romans uh, uh, chapter 6. And we'll end here. Romans chapter 6. You know Paul's always got to have something to say about anything, right? <laughs> because he, he wrote most of the New Testament anyway. In Romans 6, verse, starting in verse 16, says this. Romans chapter 6, starting in 16. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants are ye to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the ser you were that ye were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that from from the doctrine which was delivered you. You see, we were all in sin, but yet when the doctrine of Christ was preached unto us, taught unto us, understood, then we which were in sin, we were able. We had the power. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the knowledge of the Word and the power of the Spirit, to come overcome the sin that was that was putting us in the camp of the world. 
We didn't come out by our own. We didn't come out by what we obtained. We didn't come out, well, look what I have learned. Look what I have discerned. Whatever. No, you didn't You didn't discern nothing. You didn't understand anything. Right. Without the Spirit of God, you, you can't. It's impossible to understand Amen. this Word of God. Amen? Yes. And this is what His... This is what Zechariah prophesied over John for the people. And then he turned around. He said, this is what this child is going to do for the people and for the nation. Then he turned around and he began to prophesy into his child's life. Amen? And then the child began to grow in the, in the strength of, and become strong in the Spirit. To be what? If he's going to be that voice, he's going to be that uh, a, a prophet of the highest. Amen. Amen. You, you see, again, it's got to be, we call ourselves who? Christians. Do, are we strong in the Spirit enough to live what we proclaim, who we claim to be? Christian. Well, I'm just kind of weak, you know, and this. No. You don't have that excuse. We grow strong in the Spirit, praise God, to overcome our enemy and to overcome the world. Jesus said He can't overcome the world. Amen? Yes. And He overcame our enemy. Amen? Even death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray you got a little something about this. The horn of salvation. As 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 Samuel took that horn of oil and poured it on David, then we, we saw in Scripture that now we've got John who's now going to become that horn that's going to prophesy about Jesus. And, and God the Father is going to take and pour that oil out on the one that's going to come six months later and 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 tell uh, the world that He is the anointed one of God. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So it's poured out. Salvation poured out from on high. This is a message for you tonight just as much as it is for us. And we pray that the Holy Spirit of the living God would touch your heart in your mind, and your soul, and your spirit, and your understanding. The, someone said this a long time ago, and I guess it's worth repeating now. Uh, the main thing is the main thing. And the main thing is your soul when you stand in judgment before God. So what is the main thing? Not that you, that you die wealthy or uh, whatever, but that you die in holiness and righteousness before a holy and just God that's going to judge you for the eternalness that you're going to last in. Amen. You're eternal. Do you understand that? You are eternal. You will spend an eternity in either one of two places. There's no three. This is There's no third option. Amen. There's only That's one right. of two. There's a place called heaven. Amen. There's a place called the abode of God. The glory of God. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. That place in glory. In a place called heaven, in a place called the the, the 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 place of the saints of God, Paul called it the third heaven. And so, and then there's another place which is is in the absence of God and and in, in the in the eternal of His blessing and His presence. It's it's called a separation place, a place away. Uh, it was explained to a, a rich man that there's a great gulf fixed between uh, where Abraham was and where this man that found himself in a place of torment where he was being tormented in these flames. And so our, our prayer is that the Holy Spirit of God, it says no man can call Jesus Lord, <coughs> excuse me, except by the Holy Spirit. And it's our prayer that the Holy Spirit would touch your heart, your mind, this night, and draw you into Himself as only He can do. Yes. And if He's pulling and tugging at your heart tonight, don't fight him. Don't fight God. You can't win. You can't. You can't win. You can fight him, but you can't win. You cannot win fighting against the Spirit of God, the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the anointing of God. You cannot. You cannot win. So yield. The Bible says to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And so our prayer is you would humble yourself tonight and receive who Jesus Christ is. You may not understand all this stuff in your mind. I don't know that I understand it. I've been a Christian for many, many years. I'm not sure that I understand it all, but I accept it by faith and everything that He is by faith. Amen. And He'll work all that other stuff out yes, in, in totality, uh, in, if not in this life, in the life yet to come. Amen? Praise the Lord.